Hello, church family. Happy New Year. Um, my name is Tolly Stedford, and I just wanted to give you um, a little update about our Listening for Change program. Um, let me just explain, just in case you may have not heard what the Listening for Change program is. Um, the program is to ensure that all of our members of our church family feel safe and feel like um, it's a place where they can call home and that they have um they're empowered to feel belo that they have a belonging here that they they belong here they can see themselves represented here and we have our lovely church in peckham peckham and we want peckham as much as peckham to come into our church and to for us to be able to reach the gospel outside into the wider community now um this is specifically targeting race. And I'd like to give you a little quick testimony from myself. Um, I am very, very lucky to call a lot of people in this church, friends and family. We've been extremely nurtured and blessed by many people in our church. Um, we're a family that has interacted, interacted with many people here. And unfortunately, um, a few of my family members have experienced racism within our church. It was difficult. Um, I didn't know who to talk to. Uh, I didn't want to make people feel uncomfortable, even though I felt uncomfortable. And it, honestly, I wanted to retreat. And I don't want that to happen to anyone else. I don't believe that is of God. I don't believe that is what any of our family members want for our family or for our family home, which is all saints. So... We have started this initiative to tackle that. It's called Listening for a Change. Now, I just want to give you a little quick update about where we're at at the moment. We have um, met with an external facilitator who is an expert in, in race relations and, you know, bringing this back to Christ because we want to root this in Christ. And her name's Kate Coleman. She's going to be taking us through a program which will last for about six months where we will explore, walk down this journey together and at the end have some real strong recommendations for us to implement within our church family and to change the culture of how we make ensure people feel like they belong here. We have a task force. Yay! Thank the Lord, we have a task force and we have already had some meetings with Kate and they are here to support this journey. We hope to be making, onboarding our change champions and that process will be starting very soon. Um, I want to ask a few things of you who is listening right now. I need you to be patient with us. We all know that prejudice, racism, hurt has been happening for generations. It's going to take time to undo. So we're going to need patience. We're also going to need a lot of forgiveness and a lot of forgiveness because we're going to make mistakes. I'm saying we've already made mistakes. I'm saying we're going to make more mistakes. That's okay because what we're trying to do is to do better. We're trying to listen, we're trying to repent, and we're trying to grow and ensure that our family does better. Now, our family, like all families, will have problems. It's okay. And I want to say, I keep on saying it's okay. It's not okay to have the problem, but I don't want us to enter this into fear because fear should not have any place in our home. What we have to do is use our courage to be brave, to listen to understand, to forgive, and then to heal. Now, all of us that are doing this, it's not on one shoulders. This is not on my head. This is not on Jonathan's head. This is not on Andy's head. It's not on your, just your one head. No, it's on all of our heads. Everyone that is a member of this family is a part of this journey. And we all need to be committed to making sure that this happens. So we are going to have to hold each other's hands for it. And I'm happy. I can't wait to hold your hand. Um, I want to finish very quickly on a passage um, that has given me great comfort. Um, <laughs> why can't I find it? I had it prepared. Hopefully. Okay. No. Okay. Here's the passage. We harvest what we plant. 
Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same, same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you, th if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from the sinful nature. But those who live to please the spirit will harvest everlasting life from the spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Therefore, Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good for everyone, especially those in the family of faith. Family, I can't wait to do good with you. <laughs>